of them wheel. wheel off the car. That's Chinese Taipei, isn't it? Max, I don't think you can rejoin, so... Although this time the race is in the last race, it was because of the accident, but it was able to represent the country in the race race, so that other countries can see the strength of our Chinese team and can get the respect of other cars and cars. As a race race, it is a very high race 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 race. GT Sprint 是一场强度最高、竞争最激烈的赛事，车手们要在非常高速、高压的环境下比赛，并且一小时不间断也不进站。难度最高的是要与长队御用车手，或是利曼以及纽柏林二十四小时冠军等世界最顶尖的一线车手们一同较劲。虽然以我的经验来说，较为劣势，再加上我已经跑完了三场赛事，不过我决定挑战自我，参加这场冲刺赛。今天的赛程非常赶，是在一天内跑完练习、排位以及正赛。由于昨天的碰撞导致需要更换变速箱，所以在练习开始时就要先测试车辆的状况，还有变速箱是否正常，确保可以顺利完成今天的赛事。Then in about one minute, I will send you just use the pit exit. You will stay there for a few minutes. It's not yet green, and then we do installation lap. And as I already told you, go through the gears and make sure everything is okay. 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 Okay, okay. Box, box, box. Bit speed in first gear. Let's stop in front of the box. On this lap, you will, you were improving your first setup, so good job. Keep pushing. We will have time for one more lap after this. It's 01. It's really fast. Hmm. Very nice. Boxer now. Boxer. Boxer. 
你就是存著學習的心態嘛比利時呢比利時跟法國隔壁啊對不對可以的可以的但是因為他們會會improve所以對對對所以沒關係啊你就跟著學嘛哈 I go to collect the data You see the last time and so on already so not not too bad I think we didn't put everything together uh, we have also to think about that some guys have uh, their lap time cancelled, so that we are missing some good sectors from other competitors, but I think we are not so far, so it's good. We've got the GT Sprints coming up next. We've got some great drivers in this discipline. We have indeed. I mean, the uh, the, the sprint race is going to be great. We've got the qualifying, qualifying obviously coming yeah. up now. Um, but there's lots of platinum, gold, works drivers in there. This is the the, the best of GT racing, effectively. Um, and we can hear them now going down yeah. on the warm-up grid. And it sounds fantastic. These cars, the GT3 category itself, is amazing, you know, super competitive. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to see some real hot racing coming up uh, later today because, you know, these guys know exactly what they can get out of these cars. Uh, they're very used to these cars. They've been racing them all season um, and they know what they're doing out there. So, um, yeah, I think we're in for a spicy race later today, but let's see how qualifying goes. And it's all on them, one driver. Okay. Well, it's the uh, first time we're having GT Sprint here at the FIA Motorsport Games and qualifying is about to take place right now. P7, P7. So, slow down, take pick up, check on flag anyway, and box. I got blocked by the Hong Kong guy when I was on my fastest run, so... Sir, shame, you didn't put, you have your three best sectors on three different laps, otherwise we could have been two positions more ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice job with uh, Hong Kong. <laughs> yeah. Again. The, the, the reason I call you to yeah. come in, is because that lap I was like, two times up. Yes, yeah, 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 I and see. And it was like, just... Right in front and quite slow, I was like, oh man, there's no way I can Yeah, and uh, it's in your in lab that you did your best uh, first sector. Yeah. But you, you call me traffic and I see it on the map, so I say, okay, better to cancel, to check everything. And anyway, well done. Yeah. You enjoy? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. At least no pressure for the race. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, I'm expecting the guy in front to, to be a little bit aggressive. So if we're able to follow the train, we never know. So, yeah. But yeah, we obviously know we've got a lot more pace. So that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you manage the tire to the end? Yeah, but he drove it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, it was a bit loose after I went out. Okay. I'm not sure it's just the temperature dropping. Or okay. Or yeah, yeah. I will. Uh, we need anyway, I think, to do something for for the race yeah. to make uh, the rear a little bit more stable. Yeah. 
because on uh, on the deg, even if it's not a huge deg, the deg will go versus oversteer. So it's better if we do something, maybe the right height, or I need I need to, to, yeah. to think about it. But I think. Uh, but in the in the practice, I think it's the same thing. I think it's quite good. Oh, it's okay. not snapping, but okay. in quality, in the second run I did, it's kind of like just keep getting closer. Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, well. One hour in a row, even starting with new tires. Yeah. So I need to think. For sure, at the beginning, you will have a lot of weight yeah. due to the fuel. So the car will be a little bit more pushy. So we have to see. Yeah. I need to think it twice because maybe having a, a more oversteering car versus the end would be a good thing also yeah. for for fight if we need to fight. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I would prefer to take a little gamble and say we don't touch the car. You may have a little bit of understeer, especially at the beginning, because you will have a lot of fuel and also the traffic and you will have a little bit more oversteer versus the end. But as I told you, if at one point you need to push versus the end to pass some cars, I think it's better if you're able to be a little bit more aggressive. Having a little bit more oversteer, maybe it will help if you follow very close the car. So my suggestion, we keep it like this. We do, uh, as I told you, two drive through. Yeah. On the grid, I will bleed the pressure yeah. and, uh, and just rock and roll. Okay. okay? Yeah. Good. I think the oversteer is just on power. Stop yeah, going and on. remember, uh, after maybe two or three laps, I can remind you to go up with the traction control. Yes. yes. Because don't wait to have too much oversteer. Because if you wait, it will kill the tires. And maybe what you can do is running after two or three laps, I'll let you know. I, I mean, I will remind you. You go a little bit higher with the traction control. Maybe at the end, you will be able to go lower. Yeah. Just to say, okay, there's uh, five laps to go, I'm fighting for position, I need a really good exit, so I'll go a little bit lower with the traction control, yep. and if I kill the tire, I kill the tires. But, uh, and you yeah, pay attention with, um, with the track limits, yep. I will uh, let you know, because now it's one hour in a row, so we don't have Same so much. Four times. Yes. That and uh, I will tell you also, uh, be aware that the penalty might be uh, additional time at the end of the race. Like they did, yeah, five seconds, ten seconds, blah blah blah. So I may tell you, okay, you are fighting with this car, but he has a penalty, so we can stay there for the moment. Or I don't know for any reason we are still fighting with Batista. He had ten second penalty. You are behind him. Maybe it's better to stay there till the end. No, no track limits, and and then with the penalty time we can we can pass him. And also remember that when you are in the traffic close to the car in front of you, you will have less. Aero in the front, so more push, so it includes T11, T7. T10, sorry. Yeah, I tried different things yesterday. Yeah. Uh, T6, I, I just use a shit on the curve just to avoid the, the wash. And it kind of worked, but when you get out of the curve, it kind of jumps and yeah. it just slides. But sometimes it works. Why jumping front or rear? Um, I think I think the rear just kind of squats and then go. Okay. A little bit. Maybe I hit the curb at the wrong side when yeah. I come out. So I think that is no big issue. Okay, we can do a small uh, a small change if you want on the damping yeah. on the rear uh, rear side. Maybe just be side. more friendly with the curves. A yes, bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So this we're gonna do it, and uh, like this, it it should not affect the ending of the car, but at least uh, I can see. Right. Yeah. I'm going to tell them. Thank you. It is the GT Sprint race. This is it, Darren. We've got the final coming up. It's just about a minute's time, actually. Yeah, it's the, it's the big one, isn't it, really? When you think about the, the quality of drivers throughout the grid, um, this is really going to be the, where the fireworks for the end of the weekend uh, get started. So, um, yeah, looking forward to seeing how it goes. So the cars will just be getting ready now to get out, prepping themselves for the race. 
what what's going through their minds very quickly? I think right now what they're going through their minds about tire temp because no tire tents, they're really going to be thinking how they're going to get that uh, temperature into those tires okay. early on. Right. Well, let's join everything happening in the GT Sprint race. Evan Chen for Chinese Taipei has been really rapid as well over the GT Cup races. He goes into GT Sprints then representing Chinese Taipei after he's talked to Gemma. We're trying to cover all the nations down here on the grid. Ethan, you've been absolutely flying this weekend, really putting in a good fight. Uh, yeah, I tried to do my best. Uh, my, my previous race that I do the whole season was 2019. So I haven't really been racing that much since the pandemic thing happened. Uh, I'm just glad to be back at the track and competing with all, all these like such a prestigious grid and try to learn from them as much as I could. And an honour of course to be representing your country. I'm very proud to be representing our country. Uh, we are not like the country who, who get think about in terms of racing. So to be on the grid, uh, not doing too bad of a time, I think it's the best I could do and I hope they are proud of it. I'm sure they're very proud. Have a great race. Thanks, Ethan. Thank right, time to go racing. Grid cleared. The green flag is there and the safety car as it is. The leading car will blast away and uh, then we can have this final lap to get some warmth into the tyres. Let's have a look at this grid. Starting seventh is Chinese Taipei's Evan Chen. It is 13 strong numerically, but it is really high in terms of driver calibre. So many races, so many titles are won in this entry. The fans are ready, we are ready. The medal table is ready as well, because this result is going to affect who is the winning nation. There is the closing ceremony to look forward to at the end of the afternoon here at the Paul Ricard circuit. But first, it is time to go racing. The GT Sprint is about to get underway. One hour of racing. GT3 cars throughout the grid, the lights are red, the lights will change any second now to get the race underway as they accelerate down towards turn one and a very good start by Matt Campbell who gets the drop from the outside of the front row and the Porsche swoops across Australia, leads the way, they're all leaning on each other in the pack. Germany on the outside, Turkey around the outside and goes second, Anton Goeman gets the jump on Dries Van Thur as well. So Belgium, having done all the hard work in qualifying, gets run out wide, Italy through as well, and Van Thor is going back, back, back down the order. He's been beaten up, I mean, absolutely had the best opportunity to get into turn one ahead of everybody else, now that best, he's well, third awful, and Mirko Bortolotti is on that, and France has had to take a shortcut, but Bortolotti gets up the inside of Dries Van Thor as well, and look what's happened, Germany's coming back. Luca Stolz on the inside, Guven was off the road and back on again for Turkey. But Van Vool then is just hanging on to that place for Belgium ahead of Germany as they come now onto the Mistral straight. You're right about France going off the road. Berthier had to try and make his own arrangements to keep out of the pack. And the bottom of the German Mercedes looks like it's flapping. So that's the consequence of some contact. But now what we're seeing is the big boys are out <laughs> playing. <laughs> and doesn't it show? Through the chicane they come. But look at Matt Campbell's lead. He's disappeared. He's nearly checked in for his flight home. He's that far ahead. So it is Australia leading the way. In second place it is Turkey. It's Porsche. One, two. It's Lamborghini. Three. It's Italy now on the prowl. Marco Bortolotti pulls up, pulls back in again. Fourth it is Belgium. Fifth is Germany. Sixth is France. Well, who would have written that script? I mean, Matt Campbell getting the jump, maybe set it all up. He's just driven away, and uh, poor Dries Van Thorn must feel like a punch ball. He's been back, hit, front, hit, side, hit, and trying to recover and trying to get the composure back again and not lose any further ground. But look, all around here's the completion of the first lap, the opening lap, and it is absolutely like it was well, racing for victory here. So we are looking at the end of the first lap, riding on board now with Michael Benyaya, who's squabbling with Chinese Taipei, the Moroccan driver Michael Benyaya. There is Lucas Stott in fifth place then, coming through with Bruno Baptista, the Brazilian driver, fending off marching for Hong Kong China in the Honda. So that one in the book, and Matt Campbell leads the way over the timing line. He is 1.8 seconds clear of Gouven in second place for Turkey. Italy third, fourth Belgium, fifth Germany, sixth France. Then a bit of a gap opening up before seventh is Spain. Danny Jukadeo. Stoltz goes through. So Lucas Stoltz qualified third. Uh, so Germany and Belgium roughed up on that first lap. Very much so, but looks like Dries van Thor has managed to get ahead of him. Well, he has got ahead of Germany. And now he can focus upon Marco Bortolotti directly ahead of him. He's had many scraps with the Italian over many seasons racing in the GT3 series. So just I mean, indications maybe there's not a huge amount of grip at the rear of the Yardi. 
when it's pushed to the extremes. And he's now wondering how am I going to catch Bertolotti? And if I catch him, is there any way I'm going to find a way around him? You're aware we already have one track limit at T7. A good battle going on here, look, you've got Switzerland, Chinese, Taipei and Brazil all together. Yannick Battler, Evan Chen, Bruno Baptista, the athletes, they come up towards the line. 35 minutes, effectively still to go. This would be the opening of a pit window, were it to be a double driver race, but they're going to have to carry on, carry on, carry on, uh, all the way to the end of the hour. And there, uh, Yannick Battler, he's also been, like Evan Chen and Bruno Baptista, busy all weekend, the Swiss driver having done the three GT Cup races as well. It's a well-used SPS automotive performance Mercedes, and it's hanging on to ninth place right now. Yeah, I think the Mercedes, just was talking to one of your colleagues and after we had lunch the other day, and talking about lifing of race cars, these race cars, I think a Mercedes, is, the motor is life for about 20,000 miles. I mean, it goes on and on. I can't even believe a race engine would do that level of mileage, but these are GT3 cars, they're very, understressed in terms of what their potential is but that's the, an amazing statistic if you ride on board with brazil running down the first part of the east Rail straight and trying trying to get on terms with the ferrari directly ahead chinese taipei entry we're getting quite crowded isn't it as brazil tries to find a way past chinese taipei which in turn is trying to both defend and also attack switzerland Yep, yeah, there we are. Mercedes, oh, Ferrari's coming back. They can't even see the cars going way over to the... And it's, yes, what was going on there? It looked like Ferrari was one side of the track, now it's come back to the other. And Baptista sort of found himself in the middle of a trio uh, where the Ferraris, the meat and the Mercedes sandwich. So Chinese Taipei ahead of Brazil. All of that just enabling Switzerland to get by a length or so as they come now through Bendor, out wide goes Switzerland again. These corners, difficult to really get the ideal apex sometimes. You see a difference of line there. Switzerland under attack from Chinese Taipei as we get towards the halfway mark. And now look, Switzerland, the Yannick Metzler feeling the pressure. Yeah, it's got the Ferrari all over the rear. It looks good on the inside. Is there going to be space given? They have given space, but that might work for Baptista because he had the better exit and he might find himself in a stronger position than he anticipated coming into turn 15 and hasn't been able to capitalize on the straight line performance of the Ferrari just enough to drag it away from the Brazil entrant Mercedes. A big dive on the inside by Chinese Taipei and he's gone through and look at this performance. In this 我觉得我是很有机会跟他们前排车手一起竞争Yeah, so close, so close. Well done. Well done. Uh, so we are finishing, uh, I think, uh, P7 maybe overall and P2 of class. I need to double check.这场比赛最终以第七名完赛这趟法国市运会的旅程
、等待赞助商以及车队的支持，希望能够尽快迎接下一场赛事。”